World History Lesson 5. During this lesson, we are going to be discussing early civilizations in India. Our lesson objectives are identify characteristics and contributions of advanced civilizations in India, identify geographic and political factors that help bring about the rise and fall of ruling families in India, identify religion and philosophy that influence the development of the Indian culture, identify similarities and differences between ancient Indian civilizations and others around the world, identify and understand how ancient Indian practices continue to impact India today. India is called a subcontinent because of its size and due to it being isolated from the rest of Asia by natural barriers. India is shaped like a triangle and extends south into the Indian Ocean. The Arabian Sea are on India's west side and the Bay of Bengal on its east coast. India lies north of the equa equator, but the lower region falls within the tropical zone and has a warm tropical climate. Northern Indi India has the Himalayan Mountains and the Hindu Kush Mountains between much of Asia. However, in India's history, it has been invaded by other civilizations that reached India that passed through the Khyber Pass in the Hindu Kush Mountains. The Indus River and the Ganges River flow from these mountains across the northern plains of India. The Indus River flows southwest to the Arabian Sea, and the Ganges River flows southeast to the Bay of Bengal. These two great rivers keep the region fertile. The fertile Indus Plain attracted many invaders to India. Many of them came into India through the Northwest Mountain Passes. South of the plains is a region known as the Deccan, which forms most of India's peninsula. The Deccan is a plateau that includes mountain ranges, tropical forests, and rocky soil. As well as halting many foreigners, the many mountain ranges have isolated population groups from one another throughout India's history. Life in India was also greatly impacted by the seasonal winds known as monsoons. These seasonal winds would blow constant, consistently over India. The summer monsoons from June to October come from the southwest and bring moisture from the Indian Ocean and provide India with rainfall that watered the farmers' fields. If summer monsoons are late or do not contain enough moisture, the lack of rain can cause crop failures that lead to famine. Indus, river, river, Indus Valley Civilizations The Nile River in Egypt and the Tigris and Euphrates River in Mesopotamia provided the ideal environment for early civilizations to develop and prosper. The first Indian civilizations began in the Indus River Valley. Two important cities grew along the Indus River by 2200 BC, called Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa. These two ancient cities were among the most modern in the ancient world, possessing paved streets, brick houses, and public buildings. Most homes were large with some standing two stories high. They also had indoor bathrooms and sewer systems. City dwellers included artisans, tradesmen, and city workers. Many skilled craftsmen made pottery and jewelry and built furniture. Ancient Indians were the first people to make cotton cloth. Outside the city, most people were farmers. The farmers used irrigation to bring water to their fields during the dry season and raised a variety of crops including grain, fruit, and cotton. The ancient Indians domesticated many animals, including elephants, sheep, goats, cats, and dogs. Merchants and traders sailed along the East Coast and traded with faraway places as Sumer and Mesopotamia. A Mystery in History What information we have of the early Indian civilizations comes from the work of archaeologists. Many clay tablets with pictograms or picture symbols have been found on clay seals, but archaeologists have not been able to decipher this ancient language. About 1500 BC, the Indus River Valley civilization suddenly ended without any clear explanation. There could be many reasons for their disappearance. Some historians think that a natural disaster, such as a flood or an earthquake, may have weakened the Indus Valley cities. Other historians believe that the Aryans conquered and killed many of the people or drove them away. Arts and crafts, metalworking, and measuring. The people of the Indus Valley developed many techniques similar to those developed in the Middle East. 
They used a potter's wheel to shape cups and other pottery and then decorated, glazed, and baked them. Smiths worked with copper and bronze to make ornaments, fish hooks, and spears. Indus Valley artisans decorated wooden furniture with inlays of bone, shell, and ivory. The artisans and merchants of Harappa developed a uniform system of weights and measurements. They used balanced scales with weights of varying size to ensure fair trade and practices. They measured with ruler precisely marked 0.26 inches or about 0.66 centimeters. Aryan Invasions. Aryans were light-skinned people from Central Asia who crossed the mountain passes of northwestern India and invaded the Indus Plain. The Aryans were a nomadic, warlike people and had bronze weapons and horse-drawn chariots. The Aryans were much more powerful than the Dravidians who lived in the Indus Valley. The Aryans soon conquered the dark-skinned Dravidians, enslaved them, and drove many of them to the south. Eventually, the Aryans controlled all the fertile plains of northern India. In the Ganges Valley, they settled and developed India's second great civilization. The Vedic Age. The Aryan period is known as the Vedic Age. During the Vedic Age, Indian civilizations began to develop important customs and traditions. All that is known about the Aryan history and culture of this thousand-year period comes from the sacred literature known as Vedas. The Vedas are four collections of prayers and rituals, and the most important part of the collection is the Rig Veda. The Rig Veda contains many hymns and poems devoted to the Aryan gods. The Aryans had no writing system, so priests memorized and recited the Vedas for thousands of years before they were written down. The Aryan hymns and poems were in the Aryan language, an early form of Sanskrit. Sanskrit is the oldest literary language of the Indo-European family of languages. Even English is closely related to Sanskrit. Aryan Society and Religion the Vedas tell us that Aryans divided people by occupation. This division was the be beginning of the caste or class system. The three basic groups were Brahmins or priests, the Kshatriyas or warriors, and the Vyas or farmers, merchants and artisans. The class that particular Aryans belonged to was determined by who their parents were. This also determined their role in society. Non-Aryans, mostly Dravidians, workers, and laborers, made up a fourth and lowest class known as Shudras. The Shudras were not allowed to marry above their class, which maintained the superiority of the Aryans. There was also a classless element, the outcasts, or untouchables, who performed the lowest tasks. For the lowest ranked outcasts, life was harsh and restricted. They were outside the caste system for such reasons as being foreign-born, committing a crime, breaking cultural rules, or being non-Hindu. The class divisions among the Aryans grew more complex throughout time. The Aryans were polytheistic, meaning they worshipped many gods, including nature gods and goddesses. The Brahmins offered sacrifices of food, rituals, and prayers to their gods. They believed that their gods would give them a good health, victory in war, and wealth. The Aryan religion gradually changed over time, changing into Hinduism. Hinduism became the major religion in India. Unlike most major religions, Hinduism has no single founder and no single sacred text. Hinduism grew out of the combination of beliefs of the diverse groups of the people who settled in India. Fun facts. Hinduism is based on the concept of reincarnation, in which all living beings, from plants below to gods above, are caught in a cosmic cycle of life and death. Life is determined by the laws of karma, according to which rebirth is dependent on moral behavior in a previous phase of existence. In this view, life on earth is regarded as transient and a burden. The goal of existence is liberation from the cycle of rebirth and death and entrance into the indescribable state of, of what in Hindu text is called moksha or liberation. Aryan government. As their civilizations advanced, the Aryans gave up their nomadic waves and formed independent states that were ruled by rajas or chiefs. 
A Raja was the most skilled warrior and elected to this position by a council of warriors. These independent states eventually became small kingdoms with self-governing farming villages. Aryans eventually interacted with the people that they conquered as they migrated further into the Ganges Basin. By 500 BC, a new Indian civilization was created. There were many rival kingdoms, but they share many common Aryan and Dravidian cultural traditions. Aryan language and literature, ideas about government, law, social classes, and religious traditions had far-reaching effects on India's future. Their ideas and religious traditions became strong influences in Indian life. The Maurya, Maurya Empire the Maurya were an Indian family that created India's first great empire. Their kingdom in included most of northern and central India. Chandragupta Maurya established a centralized government with a well-organized bureaucracy. Government officials loyal to the emperor collected taxes, supervised the building of roads and harbors, and managed the government-controlled factories. Chandragupta's rule was harsh. He used a powerful army and a network of spies to control his huge empire. Asoka. Asoka, Chandragupta's grandson, continued the Mauryan conquest of India. His armies migrated southward, fighting a bloody war to conquer the Deccan region of India. His conquests continued until he controlled more than two-thirds of India. Sickened by the killing of 100,000 people during his bloody conquests, Asoka turned his back on further conquests. He rejected war and violence and vowed to rule by moral example. Asoka had become a devout convert to a new religion known as Buddhism, which taught nonviolence. Asoka had written on stone pillars and large rocks his new beliefs and sent missionaries out to spread his new faith. He restricted the killing of animals and encouraged others to become vegetarians. As a benevolent empire, emperor, he followed a code of conduct that emphasized truth, justice, and religious tolerance. Asoka's rule brought peace and prosperity to India and was considered to be one of the greatest rulers in the world. After his death, the Maurya Empire declined. Five centuries of invasions, wars, and disorder followed. At about A.D. 320, northern India was again united under one ruler, Chandragupta I. He was no relation to the long-dead Chandragupta Maurya. He and his successors brought a golden age to India. Science and learning thrived during the Gupta period. The Gupta Empire would rule India during the 4th and 5th centuries A.D.